Cats. I love my cats. They're soft and cuddly and super friendly. And they're smart too. For example, Loki here will start meowing out the window if he just hears my keys. And Bill is at my feet if I open the fridge because he thinks it's dinner time. But what's crazy is I never taught them that. So how did that happen exactly? Well, it turns out that there's a little bit of psychology going on. Let me tell you a story. Oh, in the early 1900s, there was a guy named Ivan Pavlov. He was studying how and why dogs salivate. He understood that they salivated when food is put in front of them because it's necessary for eating. But he also realized that dogs would salivate before receiving the food if they could smell it or see it. Not particularly surprising. I mean, I salivate when I smell a tasty steak. But here's the kicker. He noticed that if the dog even saw the person who normally fed them, they would start to salivate. That's a bit strange. They were learning to connect the person who fed them with the arrival of food. So Pavlov decided to see if he could take this one step further, and he pulled out a metronome. Right before giving the dogs their food, he would play the metronome and have it tick away. Understandably, the dogs didn't really have much of a response to this, but he only played the metronome during feeding times. After a few days of doing this, he again played the metronome, but this time gave no food, and the dogs salivated. You see, they connected the sound to the food, and you can make them salivate on command, even though they're normally totally disconnected. This is called classical conditioning. <clears throat> Okay, let's put some labels on this stuff to make it easier to identify later on. The food is an unconditioned stimulus. Think of the word unconditioned as meaning the same thing as trained. So this is an untrained stimulus. The saliva is an unconditioned response to the food. The dogs don't need to learn anything about this unconditioned stuff, they just see the food, and the body responds by making saliva. It's automatic. The metronome, or the sound of the metronome, on the other hand, is a conditioned stimulus. By pairing a conditioned stimulus with an unconditioned stimulus, we can trigger an unconditioned response. Eventually, when the dog associates the sound of the metronome with the food, we can remove the unconditioned stimulus and if we see a response to the conditioned stimulus, resulting in what was the unconditioned response, we have a conditioned response. Did you get all that? So my cats learned a lot of things without me or them realizing it. But what if I use classical conditioning on purpose to teach my cats a trick? Now, many people might say that you can't train a cat, but that's simply not true. In fact, my cats have already fallen victim to classical conditioning. You see this jar? We keep cat treats in here, but they originally came in a bag, so there's no real association between this glass jar and the cat treats other than the fact that we've been storing them in here for a little while. And yet, when I shake this jar, <laughs> all right, no more wasting time. Let's get to training. It was my mission to get Bill and Loki to come to me on command. This is something I had never taught them before. The first step was to identify an unconditioned stimulus. Both cats are food motivated, so I bought these special treats that they would only get while training. The unconditioned response would be the cats walking to the treat and eating it. The condition stimulus was perhaps the hardest thing to come up with. I knew I wanted a sound, and preferably one I could make myself that they wouldn't encounter elsewhere. And then I found it. So, I don't know if you've ever played Ocarina of Time before, but there's this one cutscene where the fish king, the king of the Zoras, is moving out of the way. And it takes forever. But he makes a pretty distinct sound. I've got my condition stimulus. Now I just need to pair the two together and see if it works. 
All right, so it's day one of training for the cats. Uh, I've already got some things set up for them and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and set up the camera on a tripod so you can see everything as it unfolds. I've got cat treats. Uh, pick these up, they're also dental treats. So uh, we're gonna be killing two birds with one stone, training and flighting, flighting, fighting plaque. So that's good. Let's see what we can make happen. You can see that the cats have already responded to the sound of the bag. They also know the smell of the treats. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this bag now, so that's not an issue. So I'm just holding these treats in my hand and uh, what I'm going to do is intermittently make this noise and, uh, and then give them a treat. So noise immediately followed by a treat. And then hopefully they, what was there a noise? We'll be feeding them a lot of treats. I don't want them to barf all over the place, but uh, we'll probably reach a limit where they no longer actually want the treat uh, because they're getting full, but we'll see what that level is. <laughs> Here we go. Oink. Okay. Oink, 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 oink. That was great. Loki was around the corner from the table, heard me make the noise, and came and looked around to see if he was gonna get a treat. And then he came to me in order to get that treat. That is classical conditioning right there. So that's pretty impressive. Good job, Loki. Bill, you need improvement. Uh-uh-uh. What do you think you're doing? You gotta wait. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. Okay. Well, end of day one. And uh, I think, generally speaking, pretty successful. You know, uh, we got a little bit of a reaction from Loki. Bill, I'm a little less sure of. Uh, he seems to be coming along slowly. Another thing I was thinking about is they pretty much have access to food 24 seven. Uh, we give them dry food. And uh, I feel like if they were a little hungrier, they would be more inclined to do some of this training. I'm not saying we're gonna starve them or anything, I mean, but just um, limiting their food intake uh, to make them hungrier uh, when we need them to be. That sounds bad. All right, day two. We are doing a little bit of new experimentation based on yesterday's learning. For example, I bought some new treats. Uh, hopefully these keep them a little bit more interested in the training and I just mix them all together. So let me set you down here and uh, let's get to training. Oink, 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 oink. They are learning but slowly. Something tells me that Loki is going to be the winner in this contest, but there are no losers. Just not as good winners. Yeah. All right, so that wraps day two, and I feel like I have learned quite a bit today uh, based on all the training that we've been doing. Um, variety seems to help. It does keep them engaged and interested. And uh, I think the next step for Bill here, since he's been having the most difficulty, is probably limiting food intake. That'll get you more interested in the treats, won't it, Bill? Loki here, on the other hand, seems to be picking it up just fine, and I think that he'll learn in no time. All right, well, it is officially day three of training, and uh, I've decided to take a few more steps to sort of make this whole experiment successful. When I went to work this morning, for example, I uh, took the cat's food bowls and put them away in the closet, and as you can hear, they're, they're just not too happy about that, right, Bill? Yeah, he's not too happy. I'm gonna put you up here so you can get a nice full screen view. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
Bill is not getting this. I'm making the noise, but he's just not coming over. All right, so here's sort of what I've concluded. It appears that Loki does a great job with this. He knows exactly how to get treats, what to do in order to get treats. He comes when I make the noise. Bill here, on the other hand, is not doing so hot. For whatever reason, he's just not learning. Uh, I guess it's not that surprising. I mean, he's not like the best trained cat in the world or anything, but I sort of imagined that uh, with the food restriction, he would be because that cat is annoying when he's hungry. What's up, y'all? It's day four. I think I'm losing track of the days exactly, but uh, this will be the last day that I'm actually doing any sort of training with them. So it's now or never. Oink, 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 oink. Hey. Oink. Bill is not responding. Well, that just about wraps up today's training, and tomorrow is the moment of truth, because we're gonna figure out if Bill and Loki have been classically conditioned. I don't have much confidence in you, Bill. But you might surprise me. Let's find out. Loki, you're doing a great job. Today's the day when I finally learn how to focus a camera. <laughs> no, but seriously. That was horrible. I'm sorry about all the crappy footage. Uh, that is no joke. All right, I'm here in the office and it seems to be perfect circumstances for what we're about to do. Uh, we've got Bill down here who's being a little sleepy and uh, Loki who's just hanging out with everybody. So I'll get you set up in this other room and then I'm gonna call the cats using my signature sound and we'll see if they come a running. Make sure that you're focused though. There we go. <sighs> okay, so I've got no treats in my hands. The cats are in the other room, and I'm gonna make my signature noise. Let's see what happens. Oi. <gasps> oh, Bill! Look at you from downtown. But where's your brother, buddy? Oh, there he is. Oi. Come here. Yeah. Come on. Oi. Good kitty. Yeah. Ooh, I'm so happy. I never expected I'd be able to call my cats using a weird duckfish noise. I hope that you enjoyed this experiment in classical conditioning, but wait, there's more. Because next video, I'm gonna be teaching my cats yet another trick but this time using the much more complex operant conditioning. If you want to vote for which trick I teach our cats in the next video, you can click right here to vote in our poll. Thanks for watching this episode of Mica Psych on Neurotransmissions. If you liked it, then please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to catch more videos like this in the future. If you really like seeing Bill and Loki, I've posted some extended scenes on our Patreon page. You can go there and see them. You don't have to be a supporter in order to see them. Uh, we're just gonna throw them up there and you can find that right here as well. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, I'm Micah. Think about it, meow.